Hello! Today I'm reading The Cat Who Came In From The Cold by Derek Longdon. Chapter 9 Aileen led the way downstairs and beat Nick to the kitchen by a short head. I followed at a more sedate pace, cradling Thermal in my arms. I could feel a shoulder bone hard against my palm, sticking out through his fur like a coat hanger. In the kitchen, Aileen rattled the milk bottles as she opened the fridge door. Up there, Nick, on the top shelf of the cupboard, there's a tin of whiskers. I can't reach it. Why did I think I could fool her? She couldn't see, but she could not see through me. No, but she could see through me. We could almost see through Thermal. Under the fluorescent light, his matted coat hung like a rag on the jutting bones and his tail, which had always been something of an apology, now draped itself across my elbow like a piece of string. Nick searched for the tin of cut food as Aileen poured a dribble of milk into a saucer and then held it under Thermal's nose. He sniffed and dubbed his tongue as though it were all too much trouble for him. Come on, love, give it a try. I lowered my arms so that his head hung over the saucer. He began to lap, very slowly at first, but then he quickened the pace a little as the liquid lubricated his throat. I remember this stuff. Milk, isn't it? He readjusted his body so that his head wasn't on sideways anymore and began to tackle the job in a more professional manner. The three of us smiled sickly smiles at each other, like the last scene in a Lassie film. He burped loudly and we smiled again. I must be off, Nick said, not moving. I shall miss my plane. Yes, you go, I told him absently. Absently. You mustn't be late. Mustn't miss it said Aileen, wiping the splashes of milk from her hand with an oven glove. We were mesmerised by the sight of the little tongue darting in and out. I'll give it a couple more minutes, see if he eats anything. He picked up the tin opener and Thermal's eyes flapped as it bit into the lid. It was one of his favourite sounds. Aileen arranged a slight morsel. Novel cuisine? Novel cuisine? Don't even know what that says. It's something cuisine uh, style on the side of the saucer and placed it under his nose. The kitten who began to nibble at the outer edges was a very tired kitten indeed. But then, as he worked his way into the middle, and the whiskers hit the spot. His fur became more alert and his ears swivelled independently. As his... Oh, it was his trademark. And a very good sign. That was very pleasant. Any more? Sorry about that. <laughs> it just bothers me when it's not. Hmm... Uh, yeah, it bothers me when it's not right. I'm using my hands a lot, it's weird. <laughs> anyway, back to reading! <laughs> uh, awkward laugh. Mm. Um, Aileen refilled the saucer a little more generously this time, and the kitten wriggled in my arms. If you don't mind, I need to get down and use my feet for this once. No, and use my feet for this one. I put him down on the floor and he tucked in. Ten minutes later, he had finished the whole tin and in celebration, he tried one of his luxurious stretches. But he wasn't up to it yet and he wobbled slightly and fell over. God, I've got a lot of gas today, don't I? You didn't really need to know that, but you know. <laughs> uh, you know, I think we might rear him, said Aileen as she scooped him up and gave him a big cuddle. 
If it doesn't explode during the night. <laughs> if it just... Oh, oh, shit. There it is. It's getting a stiff neck from being looking down for a while. It's fine. <laughs> We made a hollow for him in the duvet and he slept between us. He didn't, no, we didn't sleep, not he. Uh, not for a while anyway. Daylight was already creeping in through the window, but we slipped the tea's maid onto manual and had a final cup of tea and a cigarette while we indulged in a long awaited spot of kitten watching. I missed him. So did I, muttered Aileen, both her hands cupped around the hot tea like a child's. Silly, isn't it? How do you mean? Well, look at him. He looked like something out of Dickens. A ragamuffin. <laughs> Fagin. I've got no idea how you pronounce that, but I'm just going to pronounce it as Fagin. Uh, would have thought twice about taking this one on. He would have let his, he would have let the side down. His coat didn't fit him anymore, and it was filthy. He must have been locked in a garage somewhere. He hadn't merely brushed against the grease. It had mas massaged itself into his fur. The state of his paws suggested that he had spent the last month changing and sparking plugs on an ancient Ford Escort and around his mouth there was an oily tra tide mark not trademark there was an oily tide mark that suggested he had acquired a taste for the stuff he looks like a very small motor mechanic more like Al Johnson no more like Al Jolson. Don't know who that person is, but again, I'm just going to carry on reading. Ow! Oh! Mm. It's alright. But yeah, don't know who that person is, but again, I'm just going to carry on reading. Uh, Aileen suggested. She leaned forward and covered him with her hand, triggering off a, f triggering off a purr that came up deep and resonant. Uh, out of the hollow. We should have put a cloth down. The duvet would never be the same. He reminds me of one of my dad's pipe cleaners. They were disgusting. I switched off the bedside light and we settled down. He's lovely, isn't he? Yes. I rang the vet last thing next morning. He sounded as rough as I did. What's he doing now? Fast asleep on the bed. That's the best thing for him. You'll know what to do. Uh, they're tough little devils, you know. When he's had a rest, bring him in. Uh, I'll give him the once over. Right. Just one word of warning. What's that? Don't give him too much to eat straight off. Little and often, that's the way. It's common sense, really. Yes, of course. I put the phone down and nipped upstairs to see whether he was fast asleep or whether he'd kill or whether I'd killed him. He had left the bed and come looking for us, but the stairs must have seemed like the north face of north face of the I I G I G E Again, don't know how to pronounce that, but I'm just gonna carry on reading. Uh, <clears throat> to him. And so he had pinched, pitched his tent. Yeah, pitched his tent on the top step and curled himself up into a ball. He was fast asleep, but he managed to open one eye as I carried him downstairs. Hello, Derek, isn't it? Yes, how are you feeling now? He didn't say. He was fast asleep again, so I parked him on the rug in front of the fire and he slept away the afternoon while I worked on the book. We worked well. 
by the time Alien arrived home at team time. Team time. No, that's a school thing. Tea time. <laughs> Uh, by the time Aileen arrived home at tea time, I had four pages under my belt, and Thermal had shuffled his way through at least a dozen 